The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, makers of the one and only Miracle Whip salad dressing. We say one and only because there just isn't any other salad dressing like Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip is different, and it tastes different. Miracle Whip tastes so good, it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. More Miracle Whip is sold than the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. Try it. Make your salads better tasting with the one and only Miracle Whip. Well, the great Gildersleeve's niece, Marjorie, and her husband, Bronco, have been in their new house long enough to be pretty well settled. In fact, it's about time to invite their friends in. So this morning, Marjorie is over discussing plans for the housewarming with her uncle. Uncle, can I ask Bertie to help me with refreshments tomorrow evening? Yes, indeed, my dear. And I'd like to borrow your blue willow cups and saucers. Yeah, anything you like. <laughs> We're short of dishes, and we've invited practically everybody we know. I'm using your head, Marge. more people you get, the bigger the loot. Oh, Leroy. Well, I agree with the boy, Marjorie. I'm not mercenary, but I am practical. As a matter of fact, I took the liberty of inviting a few people myself. To my housewarming? Oh, you didn't. Are you inviting people she doesn't even know? I know them, Leroy. They're old customers of the water department. Oh. What do you do if they don't show up with a present? Turn off their water? <laughs> Leroy. <laughs> well, the more the merrier. By the way, Marjorie, since you're having a housewarming, you might give me an idea for a gift to warm it with. Oh, I don't know, Unky. Yeah, come on. You can give me a little hint. Well, if we get a floor lamp, we can return the one we borrowed from you. Oh, no hurry about that. And uh, if somebody gives us fireplace fixtures and a coffee table, we can return yours. Hey, Unc, why don't we throw the house warm and we're the ones who don't have anything? <laughs> well, I'll see you two later. Goodbye, my dear. So long. Well, Leroy, it's high time I figured out what to take to Marjorie's housewarming. Yeah. With all the nice things she'll get, my gift will look like nothing. What are you going to give her? Nothing. <laughs> Leroy, you have to give her something. Why? I'm a relative. I thought these housewarmings were just to trap friends. No, everybody who gets invited is trapped. I mean, that is, uh, they're expected to come up with something. But I can't come up with anything. I've been broke since Father's Day. Had to buy you a gift, and you're only my uncle. What a racket. <laughs> Leroy, do I say that when I'm called upon to buy a few gifts? No. You say, oh! <laughs> Come on, Leroy, let's go look for our gifts. not looking for expensive gifts. Now, I've already done a lot for Marjorie and Bronco, so I'm going to limit my gift to around $15. I'm going to limit mine to the dime store. What? I think I'll give them a goldfish. <laughs> a goldfish? Oh, with a bowl, of course. Leroy, you can't get by with that. Why not? It's gold. Looks expensive. I'll even put a label on the bowl. Made in Fort Knox. <laughs> Yes, yes. Let's go into Peavy's and see what he has. Hey, look in his window, Unc. A spinning wheel. Spinning wheel? <laughs> don't tell me Peavy's gone in the antique business. I don't know. Some of his stock is getting pretty old. Say, that's a spinning wheel made into a lamp. Yeah, and look at that big jar of beans. Hey, let's see what the sign says. Hey, guess the number of beans in the jar and win this spinning wheel lamp. Hey, I could win the lamp and give it to Mark. It wouldn't cost me a cent. Well, not a bad idea, if you're lucky enough. Come on, Leroy, let's see what Peavy's up to. Hello, Peavy. Hello, oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you today? Mr. Peavy, I'd like to guess how many beans you got in the jar. Very well. Let me see now. I guess... Uh, uh... Wait just a minute, Leroy. Before you guess, you'll have to buy something. Peavy, the sign didn't say that. 
No, I say that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What a come on. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, that's what you call a gimmick. These days, everybody has a gimmick. Who? Business has a gimmick. Politics has a gimmick. Everybody has a gimmick except taxpayer, and he'd better get one quick. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> Stevie, I'll thank you not to talk about taxes. Yeah, let's talk about beans. I'll take five chances, Mr. Peavy. Five chances? My, my. What do you want to buy, Leroy? Five pieces of bubble gum. Bubble gum? <laughs> bubble gum. Yeah, I'll help you out, Leroy. I'll take five pieces of bubble gum, too. Well, I'm trying to disappoint you big spenders, but you have to make a minimum purchase of one dollar. Oh, brother. Peavy, the sign in your window doesn't say that. No, I say that. <laughs> Now, what would you like to buy that costs at least a dollar? I can't buy anything that costs a dollar. I'd be glad to put you on the books. Uh, Leroy, it won't be necessary for you to go into debt. I'll help you win the land. Oh, boy. Peavy, what can I buy for a dollar? Not very much these days. (laughs) Of course, if you want 100 pieces of bubble gum, I can... No, thanks. I see a dollar cigar lighter down there in the case. Uh, Give me one of those. Mm, Very well. Huh? while you're paying them, I'll write down my guess. You no, know, wait a minute, Leroy. If I'm going to win the lamp for you, I should do the guessing. No, oh, for corn's sake. Now, let's see. Pretty big jar. The beans are small. They are. Here's your lighter, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, just put it on the counter, Peavy. I'm thinking. Oh, pardon me. Yeah, I should guess pretty close, Peavy. Won't be far off. Yeah, let's see. Eleven thousand three hundred and six. That's really your guess? Eleven thousand three hundred and seven? Oh, I, I can't tell you how many are in the jar, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I will tell you that you're several thousand beans off. I am? You care to try again? Sure, buy something else, huh? That's the idea. <laughs> well, what the heck? Give me one of those little alarm clocks. An alarm clock it is. Peavy, it was very nice of you to tell me my guess was off a few thousand. Yeah, it's very nice of you to guess again. <laughs> this time, I think I'll guess uh, 8,500. How's that, Peavy? You're farther off than you were before. <laughs> Care to buy something else? You went the wrong way. I'll let me try this time. You're all right, Leroy. Give me anything that costs a dollar, Peavy. Happy to do it. Now, here's a little item I haven't been able to tell. Oh? I don't know what it is, but I'll take it. (laughs) What's your guess, Leroy? Hey, Unc, I think I've figured this thing out. Why guess? Why not figure out the exact number? Well, that's what I've been trying to do. All I have to do is get a jar of that size and fill it full of beans. Say! Mr. Peavy, where can I buy a jar of beans like yours? Right here, behind the counter. We've had quite a run on bean jars. (laughs) What a come on. Bertie, can you open the door? Okay, I'm coming. Leroy, what you got there? I got Marge and Bronco's housewarming present. A jar of beans? I got to pour them out here on the dining room table. What you doing? I gotta count them. You mean you've got to know exactly how many you give them? No, no, Mr. Peavy's having a contest. Count the beans in the jar and win a lamp. Oh. I'm gonna give Marge the lamp as soon as I count the beans. Just look at that. Yeah. Sure looks like a lot more when they're spread out. Are you planning to give Miss Marge that lamp at the housewarming tomorrow or next Christmas? Uh, it won't take so long, I guess. I'll count fast. One. Two, three, four. Counting beans by the thousand. I declare sometimes I don't know what gets into this family. Brady, will you please open the door? Coming, Mr. Gillis, please. I wonder if he's coming home loaded with beans, too. Have my hands full, Bertie. Yes, but just look at the packages. Yeah, just a few little things I picked up at Peavy's. Yes, sir. Leroy didn't have much money for a housewarming gift, so I thought I'd help him get the free lamp. Yeah, let's see if I brought home everything I bought. Alarm clock, cigar lighter, safety razor. Mr. Gilfleeve, how much has that free lamp cost you so far? 
Well, about fourteen dollars. Yes, sir. <laughs> Now, Bertie, we can use all these things. Where's Leroy? He's in the dining room, counting a table full of beans. Oh, what a waste of time counting a jar of beans. You'd never catch me doing a ridiculous thing like that. No, sir. Hello, anybody home? Come in, Marjorie. Hello, Auntie Bertie. How are you, Miss Marjorie? Fine. I brought back the roasting pan I borrowed. Yes, ma'am. Been shopping, Unky? Well, I picked up a few things. Oh, I saw the most gorgeous lamp in Mr. Peavy's window. You did? Uh-huh. It's a replica of an old spinning wheel. I'd just love to have one like it in our living room. Well, it wouldn't surprise me if you got that very lamp. Really? As a matter of fact, you can just count on getting that lamp for your housewarming. Oh, Unky, I could never be that lucky. Well, you never can tell. <laughs> well, I'll keep my fingers crossed. Uh, thanks for the pan, Bertie. You're welcome. I'll see you later, Unky. Goodbye, my dear. Gee, Bertie, what do you think of that? The lamp is just what she wants. She sure likes it. Why, George, she's going to have it. How can we miss with Leroy counting the beans? <laughs> Let's see how he's doing. Leroy! Yeah? How are you coming with the beans? Up in the thousands yet? Are you kidding? 198, 190, 199. <sighs> Poor Leroy's hardly started. Oh, my goodness, look at that table full of beans. Yeah, there must be a million of them. I wonder if that would be a good guess. Well, I'm going back to guessing. I'll never get these beans counted. Leroy, I practically promised Marjorie that lamp. You can't give up now. The heck I can. But what are you going to give Marjorie? Well, what's wrong with giving her that alarm clock you bought at Mr. Peavy's? You can't do that to your sister, Leroy. That's a cheap clock. Well, I'm a cheap brother. <laughs> <laughs> Better than no clock at all. Well, they don't have one, do they? No, and if I give it to them, they won't have to leave their bedroom window open and listen for our clock. <laughs> Leroy, counting the beans in this jar is the surest way of winning the lamp. Nah, I'm giving Marge a clock. Anybody silly enough to count a jar full of beans has a hole in his head. Well, Marjorie has her heart set on that lamp, Bertie. Yes, sir. I'm going to sit down and count these beans. Give me my hat. You have to wear a hat for that? I don't want anybody to see the hole in my head. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. One of the very best ways to perk up wilted appetites these warm days is to serve a cool, tempting beauty of a salad. And whether it's a shimmering gelatin mold filled with luscious fruit or a platter of crispy, colorful vegetables, make sure that salad tastes as good as it looks. How? Simply by serving the finest tasting salad dressing you can buy, Miracle Whip Salad Dressing. It's delicious, really delicious, with a flavor that's lively and teasing, just sharp enough. And it's a flavor you won't find in any other salad dressing, because Miracle Whip is a different kind of salad dressing. It's made from a recipe known only to craft, and it combines the best qualities of old-fashioned boiled dressing and fine mayonnaise. And Miracle Whip is blended carefully a special craft way to give this salad dressing perfect satin smoothness. Try it. See for yourself why Miracle Whip is such an outstanding favorite. See why it's become the most popular salad dressing ever created. Actually, it outsells the next 20 leading brands of salad dressing combined. You'll be amazed at how much better your salads taste when you make them with smooth, delicious Miracle Whip. Get a jar from your grocer first thing tomorrow, but remember, there's only one Miracle Whip salad dressing, so be sure you see the name on the jar you buy. Miracle Whip, made by Kraft. When the great Gildersleeve learned that his niece Marjorie admired a certain lamp she'd seen at Peavy's pharmacy, he practically promised she would get it as a housewarming gift. But getting the lamp isn't as simple as you'd think. Peavy and his darn contest. Yeah, I wonder just how many beans this jar will hold. 
Must be an easier way to find out than counting them one by one. They all seem to be about the same size. How many have you counted, Miss Gilsey? None, Bertie. I'm not fool enough to count all these beans. No, sir. If I'm smart enough to be the city water commissioner, I'm smart enough to figure this out without working. Yes, sir. The way to win this contest is figure it out mathematically. Let's see if I can get any help out of Leroy's geometry book. There's a scientific way to arrive at the right answer for it. Yes, sir. You can always find a shortcut if you look for it. Yes, sir. Every time the slow-witted caveman wanted a drink of water, he ran down to the stream. Until some thinking man like me invented the bucket. You get the idea, Bertie? Yes, sir. The man with the bucket was the first water commissioner. <laughs> no, Bertie. No. Now, let me see. I have to find the volume of the jar. To do that, it says here you have to square the circle. Square a circle? Even Einstein couldn't do that. Mr. Gill, please. Yes, Bertie? Just who did invent the bucket? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe a guy named Bucket. Now, let me concentrate. Yes, sir. The volume of a cube is equal to the product of its dimensions. And since its dimensions are equal, the volume is equal to the cube of any of its dimensions. Yes, sir. Does that make sense to you, Bertie? No, sir. <laughs> Well, the fellow who wrote this book is getting away with murder, for all I know. Now, let's see again. The jar is round. And to get the area of a circle, it tells to multiply the square of the radius by pi. Hmm. You giving up, Mr. Gilsley? No, I'm not. Now, I know how to find out how many beans in this jar. You do? You bet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sixteen, one thousand six hundred and sixteen and a half. I wonder where the other half of that bean is. <laughs> oh well, it'll show up. One thousand six hundred seventeen and a half. One thousand six hundred eighteen and a half. Hi, Aunt. Hello, Leroy. What are you doing? Counting beans. What? Hey, here's the other half of that bean. You counting them by halves? <laughs> No, Leroy, this bean was split. Well, where was I before you interrupted me? Was it 1,618 or 1,619? I don't know. Oh, well, so I'm one bean off. You're going to count all those. There's more than one bean off around here. Leroy, I'm determined to win that lamp for Marjorie. Now, scoot. Okay. Mind if I take a handful from a bean shooter? Get your paws out of there. Okay. George, I'll never get these beans counted if the people don't keep out of here. 1,620, 21, 22. Ah, Bertie! All right, Bertie. If it's for me, I'm not home. Yes! 1,623. Hello, Bertie. Well, it's Gertrude. Oh, my goodness. I'd like to see Mr. Gildersleeve. He says he ain't here. Oh, yes, he is. I saw Leroy in the yard, and he said his uncle is counting beans. Well, if you know that much, I might as well tell you he's in the dining room. Thank you, Bertie. Why did the old judge have to drop in at a time like this? Hello, Gilda. I hear you're counting beans. <laughs> yes, and I don't want to be interrupted, Horace. Please. Very well. I'll sit here as quiet as a mouse. Will you do that? 1,624... Very thoughtful of you, going to all that trouble to win the lamp for Marjorie. One thousand six hundred... Not many men would waste their time that way. Confound it, Judge. I thought you were going to be quiet. I was quiet. You were talking. Well, I was talking in a low voice. <laughs> well, don't. All right, I won't. One thousand six hundred twenty-five. One thousand six hundred twenty-six. You have to count faster than that. Zeke. Pete is closing the contest at 5 o'clock this afternoon. I know that, Judge. 
1,627. He's invited me to open the sealed envelope that contains the exact number of beats. He's right. 1,628. That's because I'm a judge. He can trust me. 1,629. He knows that I won't spill the beans. <laughs> Judge, do you mind leaving before I spill this bean jar right over your head? Oh, I didn't realize that I was annoying you, Gilday. I'll see you this afternoon at Peter's. You're all right. I'll see you there. Bye. Goodbye. Thank goodness he's gone. Now I'll get something done. What a talky old goat. 1,630. 1,630. Remember, Gilday, 5 o'clock. Charge. Judge. Where was I? 1,631. 12,745. Brother, that's a lot of beans. Mr. Gilsey, I don't want to interrupt you, but can you stop counting beans long enough to eat this sandwich? Oh, thank you, Bertie. I need it. Yes, sir. Looks good. What kind is it? Roast pork. Well, pork and beans. <laughs> you don't make it. It's nearly four o'clock. Well, I have until five. The jar's three quarters full. If I don't have another interruption, I'm all set. Bertie! Uh-oh, that's Miss Marjorie. Yes, Miss Marjorie? Bertie. Keep her out here until I hide the beans. Yes, sir. Come in, Miss Marjorie. Yeah, I'll just break these loose beans into my hat and take the jar upstairs. Mm, guess I can take the hat and the jar both at once. Now if I can just get this jar under my arm. Boom. Hold it. Hold it. Beans everywhere. Well, where are the Nothing, my dear. You stay out there. I just dropped my watch. Well, I should just make it to Peavy's before the deadline. Good thing I knew how many beans were in the jar when I dropped it. Now all I have to do is finish counting these in my hat. 14,109, 14,110, and three makes 14,113 beans. Hey, I don't like that 13. Yeah, but that's the grand total. And I'll bet I'm closer than anybody else. Nobody else would be fool enough to spend a whole day counting beans. Hello, Peavy. Hello, oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Come in, Gildy, come in. You're just in time to find out how many beans are in the jar. I know how many are there, Judge. You can double-check it. Just open the envelope. Well, it's 5 o'clock, Peavy. Where's the envelope with the winning number? And just to prove everything's above board, I keep it in the cash register. Good. Now, when the lucky number is disclosed, we'll post it in the pharmacy window. That's so the winner will know who won. TV, I know who won. <laughs> Open your cash register and make it official. Very well. No sale. No sale. You sold out the store. <laughs> well, here's the envelope, Judge, with the winning number. Thank you. Hey, wait a minute. Before you open it, here's my number. 14,113. To the B. Very well, I'll record that. Well, here we go. Gentlemen, the exact number of beans in the jar is 14,123. Hey, I'm only ten beans off. I win. Now, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's see if anybody else is closer. They couldn't be. They wouldn't dare. <laughs> How about it, Peter? Well, I'm sorry to say this, Mr. Gildersleeve, but there's a guest that comes a little closer than yours. What? 14,117. That's only six beans off. Peavy, who could possibly get that close? Well, it seems to be Mrs. Peavy. <laughs> Peavy, you'll have to tell her she can't win. Who, me? 
Uh, no, no, thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. That, that'd be just asking for trouble. Phoebe, if I don't win, you'll have more trouble with me than you ever could have with Mrs. Pete. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> come home yet? No, he hasn't, Leroy. Gosh, he didn't even make it home for dinner, and the people are already coming to Marge's for the housewarming. Well, Mr. Gilfrey phoned and said he wasn't coming home until he found the lamp like the one he didn't win at Mr. Peavy. Poor old Unc. After counting all those beans, I thought sure he'd win. Me too. Maybe he got punchy and started counting the buttons on his vest. Hey, he's coming in the back way. Yeah, I found it. Here, just look at this. My, my, ain't that a pretty lamb? Yeah, just like the one at Peavy's. Spinning wheel and all. It's exactly what Marjorie wants. I gotta give you credit, Unc. You didn't give up. My boy, I never give up. No, sir. Mr. Gilfrey told Miss Marjorie she's gonna get that lamp and she's gonna get it. Well, getting this lamp wasn't easy. I looked all over town. When at last I saw it in the store window, the place was closed. Yeah? But that didn't stop me. I found the owner, dragged him away from his dinner table, and bought the lamp. How much did it cost you? Well, it cost just a little more than what I spent on free chances at Peavy's. But it was worth it. Yeah, I trust Peavy, but I'll always wonder if Mrs. Peavy didn't pull some sort of shenanigans to win that lamp. She sure caused you a lot of trouble. Well, Mrs. Peavy can't stop me. Now, Bertie, let's find a big red ribbon to tie on it. Yes, sir. Hey, it's mine. Hey, hide the lamp behind the door, Leroy. Okay. Coming, Marjorie. Oh, Auntie, let me give you a great big hug. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, what's this all about? I just had to run over and tell you. You said I'd get the lamp, and I did. Well, I haven't given it to you yet. You say you have it already? It's my housewarming present from Mrs. Peavy. Oh! Greg Gildersleeve will be back in just 30 seconds. Like shrimp salad, you'll like it more than ever, made with Miracle Whip salad dressing. Just try it. See what a wonderful, peppy flavor Miracle Whip gives that salad. Miracle Whip has a flavor millions of folks call just exactly right. It's a different flavor, too, one you won't find in any other salad dressing. Once you try this fine dressing, you'll join the good cooks all over America who agree that salads taste better than ever, made with the one and only Miracle Whip. Here you breakfast, Miss Gilsey. Oh, thank you, Bertie. Miss Marjorie's housewarming was sure a big success. Yeah, fine. Those his and her bath towels you got for them were real nice. Well, I had to run all over town last night to get them. Yeah, that Mrs. Peavy, sneaking in ahead of me with that lamp. I couldn't let Margie know I had one for her just like it. Well, we got an extra lamp out of it. By the way, Bertie, what happened to all those beans? I don't know. I was going to pluck them, but they disappeared. Yeah, I'll bet Leroy got them. Where is that boy? Don't look now, Mr. Gilsey, but I can see his eyes peeking over the back of the couch. He's watching you. Who? Oh? He's got a straw or something in his mouth. Right, George, I'd like to know what he did with all those beans. Ready? Aim! Fire! Oh! Leroy, give me that bean shooter. Good night, folks. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft Quiet.
quality food product. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday throughout the summer for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Calling all sandwich makers, be on the lookout for a miracle sandwich spread when you're shopping. Take a jar home and discover what a delicious different flavor this wonderful spread gives your sandwiches. Miracle Sandwich Spread is made by Kraft from America's favorite salad dressing, Miracle Whip, and spicy relishes. Use it along with the meat or cheese sandwich filling you like best. Or for the quickest, easiest, thriftiest sandwich you could want, use it alone between slices of bread. Get it tomorrow, Miracle Sandwich Spread. Tonight, hear the best of Groucho Marx on NBC. NBC.